Well, it's six degrees Celsius, which is, it looks like 41 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, just a few degrees above freezing. Let's go pick some peppers. Picking peppers? What the? That's crazy talk. Ooh, can see my breath too. Yeah, because we're in zone four and we've still got some peppers going. We've still got some tomatoes going. Let me show you how we do that. We do that by utilizing this amazing passive solar greenhouse that we built. We're able to extend our growing season by like a month on each end of the growing season. Normally our growing season from first frost to last frost or first frost to last frost, whatever. Our growing season's 115 days, but by using this, we can make it 175 days. So not only can we extend our growing season here by an extra 60 days with this greenhouse, but we can also increase the temperature, which means we can change our growing zone inside the greenhouse. So for example, it's six degrees outside, it's 10 degrees inside. In here we have our tomatoes, our bell peppers, cayenne peppers, jalapeno peppers, we've got tobacco going, rosemary, uh, ground cherries, a couple lemon trees. So it really changes the environment for us and allows us to grow many more things. So look at this, it's mid-October, it's six degrees outside, and we've got tobacco that's blooming again here. It's just mind-boggling, I love it. We've got a couple lemon trees that we started from seed, these will be taken inside soon so they can overwinter inside. We've got a ginger growing here. It's gonna be taken inside too for winter and uh, continue to grow in there where it's a bit warmer during the really winter seasons. So not only do we still have uh, cayenne peppers here that are growing, some we have to harvest, but if you look closely here, we have more flowers popping out, which means even more cayenne peppers on the way. Our bell peppers aren't doing too bad. We recently just harvested six of them uh, for dinner with friends when they came over. We did some shish kebab with our chicken, our beef, our peppers, and it was awesome. So these guys actually need a water. Uh, I've kind of been neglecting the watering in the greenhouse because we've had so much other stuff going around, going on outside. As you can tell, the tomatoes need a water too. Looks like we've got maybe four tomatoes that we can harvest now, but there's a lot in here that are still growing. So we'll still have tomatoes coming. Uh, tomato plants are still flowering as well. So we'll see if they make it and uh, actually produce anything within because now we're uh, October, mid October, usually in the next few weeks, it gets to the point where it gets really cold overnight. We might get, down to five degrees or so here in the greenhouse so i'm not sure if the tomatoes will keep going at that point so what we started doing this past year in the greenhouse as well is utilizing it to start plants so we can propagate more plants and shrubs and bushes even trees that we want to plant outside so we've got some lavender here we've got some ornamental bushes we've got some lupin some columbine and other, I, I believe marigolds too at the back there. We've got some Camry's plants at the back by the tomatoes. So what we'll do is we'll use this space to start the plants, start the shrubs, start the trees, get them growing, and then transplant them outside so they continue their journey outside. So we just picked a few more cayenne peppers. We'll take them inside, throw them with a bunch of others. I might dehydrate these ones again, make some more cayenne powder I'd be using that basically every morning when I have an omelet I throw a bunch on there it's so good just looking at the tobacco plant as I'm walking out and there's so many more seed pods on this that I got to collect we've already collected so many seed pods and it produces I want to say thousands of seeds it's crazy so we already have like a huge bag of tobacco seeds and just growing this one plant alone in the greenhouse has already produced, like I said, thousands of seeds for us. It's really cool. And what we've been doing too is harvesting the tobacco leaves as we go. So we'll cut a few off, start them drying and uh, curing inside. And then more will come and then we'll cut some more off. It's really neat. This 
just I'm amazed by this tobacco plant and growing it in the greenhouse is just so cool here. And I guess I should mention too, down along the front, we've got some rosemary, some chives, some basil and thyme. And we love collecting that too. Whenever we're cooking, we can come in here and grab what we need and take it inside. So to build this, it wasn't actually that expensive. We used malaise, which I believe is larch. So there's six by sixes along the front here and then six by sixes along the back and along the sides and then the frame is built on that we've got two by sixes that go up to a ridge beam one big post in the center that supports that and then two by sixes for the roof to hold the roof in place the outside is covered with pine that we milled from the property which made it even less expensive the back is covered with that pine too. Then the inside has a vapor barrier on the sides and back with insulation stuffed down in and then another vapor barrier and then another layer of pine which sandwiches that insulation in the walls and the back. And then when the sun hits the plastic and the windows in the front, it heats up the inside and we've got dirt in there we've got patio stones in there we've got a rain barrel filled with water which actually holds the heat during the night and releases that heat into the greenhouse which keeps the greenhouse at a higher temperature the front of the greenhouse too is on a 45 degree angle which is perfect for catching the sun and it's also great for shedding the snow we get five to seven feet of snow here and it has no problem just sliding off the front of this. We used, I believe it's like six, eight, 10 mil, something like that, probably 10 mil, I think, if I remember correctly, a vapor barrier on the front. It's not even like greenhouse plastic. And so far it's been three years, four years that it's held up, done an amazing job. We've got a slight tear in it now, and we've still got to replace that vapor barrier for this year, well, for next season, but even with the amount of snow we get, it has no problem standing up to it and shedding the snow as soon as the sun comes out. All right guys, so we'll head back inside. It's time to grab some more coffee and start the day and get to work. So I hope you like that kind of little overview on the greenhouse. If you don't have a greenhouse like this, I highly recommend building one or even getting a high tunnel and put some insulation around it or something because this, this really makes a huge difference, especially in the cold climates like this. So guys, if you like this video, check this one out. It's on our greenhouse too, and some of the things we've tried to improve. Yeah. <laughs> 